Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, uh, it's the number 30 in the first Steps in Preparation series, we are going to take a look at um, the final note group. Okay, so let's just uh, open up Blender. Let's go to the Note Editor, and let's, just to make things a little bit more interesting than the default cube, let's just um, load in the same image that we used in the last tutorial from the Mango project. Input image. <clears throat> um, and chat, should, that one should be over here, like this. And this is our image. Okay, let's just start it there. Okay, so now the final uh, group are the distort nodes. Okay. And the first one is the translate node. And by the way, those nodes are quite easy to understand. They are really quite simple, except for the last two. And we are going to ignore them for now, okay? Because um, in order to explain the last two, we would need um, camera tracking, and that is a bit too advanced or uh, just a different topic than we have right here, okay? So let's just um, add a translate node, and let's just move that or put that in there, and let's just move that a bit closer together, like this, okay? Uh, it's quite self-explanatory. You can just move the image in the X and in the Y direction. By the way, you can zoom in and out with V, um, respectively with Alt V. So yeah, okay. Now if you increase that, then just the whole image moves. Okay, you can see like this, and the same goes in the Y and X direction. Okay. And wherever there's there, there appear black parts, if you go to the alpha view, you can see those parts are now have now an alpha of zero. Okay, that's kind of important as well. Um, the problem is they do not get cropped. Okay, so it's still the same size the image output, just that um, the actual image itself moved within um, the whole image. So that can be a bit of a problem, but I'll, I'm going to show you in just a few minutes how to get rid of that as well. So this is our first node and it's really a fairly simple node. Okay. Cool. Now, the next one is a rotate node. Once again, rather simple. You can just rotate your image, okay, in degrees. Put in 50, and you can see your image rotates by 50 degrees. Um, but there are a few issues, okay. As soon as you rotate an image, um, you can get anti-aliasing issues. Okay, now in this case, it's not really a big deal, I, th I think. You can barely see that. Um, but in other images it can be a problem. Okay, let's just go with 70 degrees. Maybe at some point we can see something. Um, yeah, anyway, because if you rotate the image, um, the anti-aliasing has to be, uh, like, recalculated, okay? And there are three modes for that, uh, filter modes, B-cubic, B B-linear, and nearest. I can honestly not see, um, why you would want to use nearest, usually. Um, but... Just play with them. In my opinion, B cubic is the best. Billionaire is a bit sharper, a bit less smooth, but uh, it works quite well um, as well. And then nearest is, um, let's call it extraordinary. Um, if you want to go for that kind of look, then you can use it, otherwise not. Okay. So yeah, other than that, quite simple as well. Next node is the scale node, and this one is once again quite simple. However, there are a few things to consider. Let's just drop that in. And right now, um, x, x is uh, 1 and y is 1, so nothing changes. So we can actually see the whole image. Okay. Now, if we change that to 0.5, then you can see our image gets squished together on the x-axis by a factor of 2. Now, um, once again, you can see the outer parts do not get corrupt off. They are still there. They aren't like, uh, you know, sliced off or whatever. They are still there. Same goes, of course, if you want to um, scale it up, 1.5. Once again, the image uh, itself is scaled, but um, the container, so to say, is still the same size. Okay, 1. And same goes for the y-axis, 5 to scale it really a lot or whatever you want to do. But you have a few other options up here. You can also go to Absolute. 
and now you work with pixels. Okay, so right now you scaled your image to one pixel by one pixel, which is not a lot. Okay, so we know that this image has a size of 4069 pixels, 96 pixels actually, sorry, by 2160. So let's just change that to 4096 and that to 2160. And you can see we have it back. And then you can also just type in any number you want and you can see your image um, is scaled, is being scaled accordingly. And then we have scene size and render size. And um, if you go to scene size or render size, nothing happens, okay? It's just like a default thing. So let's just go to relative. Let's go to one back here. This is our actual size. Now if you go to scene, then you can see it's just smaller, okay? And it's actually, um, let's first talk about the render size actually. If you go to render size, it just um, uses this value over here. However, since we are at 50%, that actually influences um, the final uh, output. So if you go to 100%, then this is actually bigger, as you can see. And then you have a couple of options here as well. You have stretch, which just, uh, let's just start with uh, fit. If you fit it, that just means it keeps its original ratio but it fits it into um, the given container, which is the render resolution. If you go to stretch, it just stretches it so it actually fits exactly. If you go to crop, then uh, it just um, makes sure that no, no black parts appear. And the, the names are a bit uh, irritating. I think the easiest way to explain is that if you go to fit, then it just fits it in one axis. In this case, it will be in the, y, in the X axis, okay? And if you crop, then it fits it just in the um, X axis, okay? Uh, yeah. And then you can offset the image, which is like an inbuilt, that was a dumb idea, an inbuilt um, translate node, so to say, in both directions. This is really a bit too sensitive here. Uh, anyway, and those lower inputs usually don't really um, do much, or at least I haven't found out what they do in either render or scene size, okay? Let's just go back to one or to zero actually and zero and to stretch. Cool. Now, if you go to scene size, then you can see it's a bit bigger. It's just about, I'm not really sure, four times as big, I think. I don't really know where the scene size comes from. Uh, if you do, please post in the comments as always. Um, but it's really not something you usually use. Usually you use render size, especially if you wanna uh, make a backdrop, uh, a background image fit in, uh, into your scene. Other than that, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I just don't know what the scene size is for. Okay, so that's that uh, as well. So let's just cut that out as well. Next thing we have is the flip node. Um, this is rather simple to understand as well. You flip it in the x-axis or in the y-axis or in x and y. Okay, and if you then duplicate that and put that in again, then it. Um, reverses the effect, of course. Uh, yeah, you could also go to only Y and then it would be the same as only X without that. And so on and so forth, just a flipping node. Next thing we have is the crop. And this is actually important now. Um, when you drop that in, you just see a black image. And um, <clears throat> that's because um, all those values are left to zero, okay? And what those values are, you have left, right, up, and down. And I found that it doesn't really matter which one's up and which one's down, or which one's left and which one's right. Just imagine it this way. Those are two kind of like um, bars or lines on the x-axis, okay? A line that goes from up here to down here, and that can be moved on this x-axis. Same for the right. And the same goes for up and down. So let's just set the up to 1 for now and check relative in this. Oh, let's just work with pixels, okay. To 2160, and let's just play with the right. And you can see our image uh, reveals itself. And that is because we have those bars here, and those bars here, those Im imaginary bars. Um, this one bar on the y-axis, which is a bar that it can be matched from here to here, is on zero, which means it is really in the lowest corner here. And this second bar on the y-axis is at 2106, which means it is up there. 
So everything in between that bar on the uh, y-axis is um, displayed, is being displayed, okay? But it also considers those two bars, okay, which is this one and this one. So everything between 0 and 491 is being displayed as well. So with those sliders, you uh, define which part of the image is being displayed on this, on the x-axis, and with those, you will define what's being displayed on the y-axis. And the reason why I said it doesn't matter which one is which one, because uh, up or down, you could simply switch them, is because, or, or right and left, you can switch them as well. If you increase that, you can see more and more gets revealed. But now, if you might think that, okay, this is the right bar, right? And this is the left bar. So the left bar cannot be on the right side of the right bar, but that's not true. You can just go to 600, and you can see what happens. You can go to 744. You can simply switch the position and nobody uh, would say anything. Same goes with down and up. You can just increase the lower bar. And then you can just decrease the upper bar. And you can see there's not like negative space or anything. It's just um, it, it displays it completely normally as if you would put it in the other way around. So I hope you can understand the, co understand the concept here. You have like one bar on the x-axis, one and the second one, and the same goes for the y-axis. Now, let's just put that all to zero again. <clears throat> you can see this relative um, button here, and that relative button does the exact same thing as it does in any other node. It just makes everything relative, which means we're no longer working with um, pixels, but rather with values from zero to one, Zero meaning zero percent, one meaning one hundred percent. Okay, so now let's say left is zero, right is one, and up is zero, down is one. You can see our entire image is being revealed. Okay, and now of course you can as well switch them once again, put that to zero and that to one, and it has the exact same effect. Now let's say we have left 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.25 and 0.75 for example. You can see only this middle part of the image is being revealed. Now the problem is that as with the other nodes, this, those black parts are not automatically being removed, they're still here and we don't want them. Probably. In this case maybe we want it, in another case we don't want it. So just hit crop image size and now you can see it, it's being cut off. Okay, And that's what the crop uh, node is, is, is very good for because for example let's just um, mute that actually so we can see our normal image and now let's just once again put in the scale node okay you can see let's just go to relative one and one so now let's say you want to scale that down to let's say 0.5 and 0.5 okay um, problem is that now we have this black border and here we do not have a crop function because this is not a crop node but here in the crop node, we can just um, unmute that and then crop it accordingly. Crop it accordingly, okay? And you can see those values, um, they work well with each other because this scales it to 0.5 in each direction. And this basically crops everything off except those 0.5 that are between 0.25 and 0.75. And this way you can see we cropped our image, okay? So, yeah, what I'm not sure actually about, let me just try one thing. What happens if I put the scale node after the crop node, okay, like this. And you can see that works as well. I didn't know that, I just learned something myself. Great, so you can also crop the image first and then scale it down because whatever's outside this cropped region is still stored in uh, somewhere on your, uh, on your computer, so it still knows what has to be there after you scale it down which is great. So let's just uh, move the crop node to up there as well and the scale node as well. The next node is actually quite weird, I'd say, and it's the, it, it's called displace node, okay? And what that does, it actually displaces your images, but you can see you need a vector input in there, okay? And this is, I can tell you, it's fairly cool. Um, so let's go to our 3D view and let's just make sure we have our cube here and let's make sure it's somewhere visible here. And let's just make one thing, let's just do one thing, let's just um, take that. Let's add a subdivision surface on level 2 with simple, so it doesn't actually um, 
round the coordinates and then let's add a second subdivision surface on level 2 as well like this now let's just set that to smooth so we have a slightly more interesting geometry um, or actually you know what let's just delete that let's just add in a monkey okay let's delete that again shift c to reposition a 3d cursor and then i might actually start this by keys okay shift a and let's add a monkey again rx to around there once again subdivision surface on level two and let's set it to smooth and now on the render layers let's just enable normal because that gives us the uh, normal vector image so to say from this monkey f12 to render that let's go to the node editor and let's just hit shift a input render layers and now under normal we should see nothing um what went wrong there give me just a second maybe oh now we do have a composition node um let's just render that again here we go this time it worked um, not energy. You can see this is our normal output, okay? And if now, for example, as you might already, um, as you should remember from one of the last tutorials, if you go to uh, normal and you put it in there, you can see this is our um, picture of the monkey um, that just displays the normal, okay? The darker, um, the greater the angle between the view the viewing angle and the actual normal angle and um, the whiter the smaller or the, the, if it's completely white then the normal vector and the viewing angle are or the viewing vector whatever you want to call that are exactly parallel so let's delete that <clears throat> and let's use this normal as an input for this displace okay and as an image we're using this image to be displaced Control shift left click to connect it to the viewer and you can see not much i guess or nothing now with those value you actually um set how strong displacement is okay and you need to set quite a high value so let's just bump that up a bit and now you can see our monkey and how it displaces the background around it and this gives you quite a cool effect um as if you put like glass in front of a, uh, of a photograph it's not entirely realistic but it's quite cool and you can also kind of like um, adjust the smoothness of the glass if you increase that you can see it becomes like a bit more um, distorted in a way okay uh, you should just play with those values and then you can actually find out what it does you can see this gives off a really really cool effect um, yeah, and now what we can do, for example, we can add in a translate node. Uh, we have it up here, translate. Move that to over here. And now you can see, you can simply translate the monkey around. And this way you could also animate like um, a glass over image move, okay? Now, it's not uh, a very photorealistic move uh, composition, of course. You'd have to actually render this if you want a, a real... Uh, a really good um, distortion effect from the glass like an IOR effect but it's still it's a cool and fast um, effect and I, I must say I like it a lot although I rarely ever use it so you need a normal input from something usually from a render layer or something and then you can just add your monkey over your scene and then you can also let's just try to move that up with his face a bit more bit more like this and let's just move this up a little bit and now it's exactly over his eye now I think the distortion effect is a bit too strong so let's just go down to let's say 50 And now it's a bit less strong so you can see what kind of uh, effect this gives you um yeah pretty cool put that over there cut that that over there let's cut that let's cut that okay now the next uh node is the map uv node and this is actually quite special what this allows you to do is it allows you to texture your um model after you've actually uh, rendered it okay according to UV coordinates. So let's just delete this um, image for now, we don't need it. And let's just to simplify things, let's just uh, delete the monkey and let's add a cube again. Okay, 
let's go into edit mode and let's just down here go to tag seam and let's actually set up a scene now let's go to control um, tab and let's go to edge mode and now let's just control click on all the edges we want to um, create a seam for okay and we haven't talked too much about UV unwrapping yet, but UV unwrapping is basically the process of unwrapping your your, your cube onto a flat plane, so you can then map um, a texture onto it. So let's just hit Control, and um, that didn't really work. Control right click on those edges that you want to select, and in order to um, unwrap a cube efficiently, you basically want to select two um, st connected strings of um, edges, like this is one. And over here we have one with uh, three um, with three edges, and then you want to connect it. You want to connect them at some point like this, and then once you've done that, you can see we have they are marked red now, so the seam is set up. You want to hit A to select everything. I actually missed one there. Uh, let me check again. Something's wrong now. Um, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the connected one. Okay. Hit A, U, and unwrap. And then if you split the view, if you go to your image editor, and then just set up a new image. It's really matter just so we can see what happens. You can see now um, the topology of this cube is being projected onto this image. Um, and this is the result. And you can see over here, we haven't talked about that too much either, so please bear with me here. You can see under UV maps, we have a UV map, okay? And this is, this is what a UV map is. So let's hide that again. Let's go back to the node editor. Oh, one other thing. In the render layers, we have to select UV in order for this to work, okay? Hit F12 again, go to node editor, and here we are. Now, this is our, our output, okay? And let's say we want to map um, any texture, but let's just create a text. Let's just go to this material, create a new material, doesn't really matter. And then let's just select it up a new texture like this. And then let's just leave it the way it is. And let's select that texture over here under texture. Make sure you don't select text because this is like a default texture that's already set up when you open Blender and it doesn't really do you any good. So let's m make sure you create a new one and select it over here. And then let's just say we want to call color texture that cube. So what you could, for example, do is use the alpha over there and the color over here, and you can see that's what we get. So now this uh, cube has a texture applied to it. Now we could also set this to multiply, and that's what it looks like. And now from this perspective, it's not very apparent, but uh, let's just do one other thing. Um, let's also turn on ambient occlusion, so this whole thing is a bit more... We don't have this black part over here, let's just set that to 0.2. Or let's just 0.5, actually. Let's hit F12 again. It'll take a bit more time. Oh, and actually, <laughs> another problem. I created this new material, right, for the cube, in order to make a texture for it. But I don't really want this texture to render, because I want this texture to... Um, I want to apply this texture afterwards in the composite, so let's just uncheck the texture. So now the material no longer renders with the texture. F12 again. So now we, here we have a cube. Go to the node editor. And you can see from this perspective, it doesn't even look too bad, but you can see that this is this texture is just being project, projected very flatly onto this cube. And with the map UV node, we can change that. So the, what you have to do, you have to drop the map UV node into the in between the texture and the multiply node, actually. And then you can see over here we have this uh, UV <coughs> um, pause, okay? And with that alone, you cannot really do a lot of things, but you have to use this map UV node. And then if you plug that in over here, then you can see this is what happens. And now the texture is no longer just being projected onto the cube, but it's actually, it actually um, cares about the edges, so to say, okay? And now we can just scale that up. A little bit. You can actually see how um, the texture bends around the corners. And this is one way of UV mapping something onto an object after rendering. But you can see it's not very clean. Okay, you can see over here, there is this edge. 
Um, this is also partly because of the actual topology right now, but uh, more on that in just a second. So now if you increase the alpha, you can see um, whatever is behind this actually shines through. Okay, um, and it just has a few issues, okay. You might try to um, use a dilate erode node or something to get rid of that, but it doesn't really work all too well. Now what happens, and you can see this is a very um, sharp edge over here, what happens if we once again go to subdivision surface, simple on level 2, and then another subdivision surface on level 2 as well, and then onto smooth like this okay let's hit f12 again so it looks like and now in the node editor you can see this doesn't really do us any good however you can also see one thing the subdivisions are being considered of course but you still get this ugly black line there okay and yeah in order to get rid of that it's a bit difficult what you might try actually let me just see you can go to filter as i just no uh, mentioned use a dilated road node and let's just Dial the whole thing by one. Let me see if this even if this even works. Doesn't seem to work. Um, oh, here we go. It did work actually. Let's just scale it down a little. Okay, and now if you see if you only erode it or dilate it by one. You can see this line becomes a bit more, um, a bit less less obvious. And now, if you go to two, it's even better. But then you get some overlapping going on there. Uh, yeah. So this is far from perfect. Usually, you always want to texture um, your objects properly um, with your other uh, ordinary tools. But this is just one way, and I think in some cases maybe it's handy. I don't know. Uh, I never really use it, but uh, it's good to know it's there. Let's just delete the dial the road node. Let's move that to over there. And let's see what the next thing is. Is there even... Okay, lens distortion. We do not need those things anymore. Um, let's just delete that and let's just delete that one as well. Let's just go to our 3D view. Let's delete both modifiers again. We don't need them anymore. Let's make that flat again. Let's go to zero and let's just move the camera out a little bit. Let's just duplicate this cube a couple times. So we have a few cubes, cubes everywhere in order for the next effect uh, to really show like this F12. And this is what we get. Now, if you go to the node editor, you can see this is our image and this is the lens distortion node. Just drop that in. And now um, you have two major options here, distortion and dispersion. If you use distortion, then you kind of get a fish lens effect, okay? Which looks like this. And all the way to one, it's just a circle or not or an ellipse actually, not a circle, but an ellipse. If this were a square image, then it would be a circle, of course. You use this effect also to generate a um, a vignette. I showed you that before in one of, in the, um, for example, in the appetizer series tutorials. Uh, but anyway, next thing is dispersion. Um, and that just gives you this chromatic aberration effect, okay? And I must say, I think it looks really, really cool. But this effect is so overused, okay? Everyone applies this to their renders, okay? So um, it actually does appear in photos. At like this level, mm, yes, like this, as a, as a rule of thumbs, use it very, very, very uh, softly. Okay, don't apply too much dispersion. It just makes your renders look uh, a bit, a bit, um, well, cheap. Okay, just not very professional. So don't, or go with an even lower level of let's say 0 0.005, 0 0.003, yeah, something like that might give a... Okay, that's a bit, a bit too... 0 0.005. Around like that is probably acceptable. But, uh, yeah, just... It's just... This is supposed to make a subtle change and not something something very noticeable. Okay. Now, what do those other things do? 
if um let's just zoom out a little bit like this let's type something more extreme in here let's go with point two okay you can see those edges also start to um get dispersed which we is not something we want okay because essentially this gray area here is supposed to go on into infinity and therefore no chromatic aberration should happen here at least uh according to my understanding of it so if you use fit then it just zooms into the image until all those parts disappear okay but that's probably not really what you want so instead there is this projector setting and this just um, flattens your image out again it, it kind of gets rid of this distortion effect however it also gets rid of the dispersion effect a little bit which is in case you want to go for really strong dispersion not quite what you want to do even if you max that out all the way to one you can see it starts to look a bit weird okay so um, yeah but as I said you shouldn't work with such strong dis um, dispersion anyway and that's what it would like without the projector okay same goes, of course, let's go to zero here, with the distortion option. 100% distortion. If you go to projector, it flattens it out, so it essentially doesn't matter what you type in there. It just doesn't have an effect, okay? Or you go with fit, then it just zooms in until you can only see, uh, d d until the black parts disappear. However, now, of course, your render will uh, lose um, detail because... Um, it's not high resolution enough, okay, because you just zoom in, you don't re-render anything, so that's not a good thing. And then the third thing, um, if you check Chitter, then this makes everything go a little bit faster, okay? If you check Chitter, every operation is supposed to be a bit faster. Um, however, the quality is not quite the same, okay? Uh, that's why you can see all this noise. You can use this noise for an artistic effect, okay? For example, let's just turn those to on uh, off I mean so you can see you can uh, use this to apply like film grain okay because what's pretty handy about this is that if you control shift click and if you recalculate it every time you can see it's got like a different seed every time so on every image you'd have a different seed of noise and therefore this is actually quite handy to generate noise okay um, but this is a bit too colorful, so you'd have to use some of the color notes I introduced in one of the early tu earlier tutorials to get rid of all this uh, extreme color and make it more desaturated or something. And then you could like multiply it over in a, a given scene or whatever. Um, yeah. And one thing to note as well is on the, dis on, on the dispersion setting, you cannot go bet below zero, okay? But on the distortion setting, you can go, you can go below zero. And you then you get like an opposite... Um, fish lens effect. I'm not really sure what that is called. Fish eye effect, I'm sorry. And you can go up to minus 0 0.99. 999, which also looks quite funny. And now if you turn on dispersion, then you can get some interesting effects. Not very realistic, but interesting. Anyway, that's it for the lens distortion node. And I think there's only one more node except for the last two. There's a transform node. Um... The transform mode is just like a node that does everything a little bit, okay? And uh, let's just put that... Oh, actually, let me show you one other thing that's also quite important. If you have a rotate node... I'm sure you can remember uh, the different ways to anti-aliase your image, right? Now, in this case, actually, you can see... If you have a rendered output, then for some reason, whether it is nearest or bilinear or big cubic it just doesn't make a difference okay this is only important if you rotate photographs at least as far as i know i do not know why that is to be honest i have no idea but that's just how it is if you use um rendered footage then it doesn't really make a difference unless there's like a setting that i've missed or something yeah if you know something about that just post it in the comments as always Okay, now about the transform um, tools. You have the same kind of filter options over here. Be cubic, be linear, and nearest. And once again, they don't really make a difference in this scene right now. And then you just have uh, several options to translate, rotate, and scale your scene at once. Okay, so let's just move out a little bit. 
you can adjust the X position, the Y position, the angle. This is just way too sensitive. And finally, the scale. Okay. So it's like a multifunctional node, and um, but you would still use a crop, um, a crop node to actually crop off the black parts. Okay. Although in this case, when it's actually rotated, this doesn't really work so well. But uh, anyway, so this is like the final node in the distortion, from the distortion nodes. Um, Stabilize 2D is a technique where you can um, take shaky um, footage that you filmed with a hand camera or something, and you can stabilize it with the technique of camera tracking, okay, when you actually track your image. And movie distortion is something similar. It's just, or not similar, but it goes into the same direction. You have to use camera tracking for both techniques, and we did not do that yet, and we're not going to do that for a couple more episodes. Quite a few, actually, because uh, it's just not that essential, in my opinion, right now. So, yeah, this is your... Um, those are your distortion notes. If you have any kind of comments or questions, make sure you post them in the comment section. I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.